So the idea is, with such changes, what can we do about our order quantity? Because we would like to fix it, right? Under the continuous review policy. So the idea goes that, hey, you know what? Can we assume that the daily demand is the mean daily demand? Fix it as a constant. Because that's the, the demand quantity that is most frequently encountered, right? Because normal distribution, the mean is the mode. So the, the most frequently observed demand quantity is 20, why don't we say, let's assume that demand is 20 every day. When we do that, something magical happens. Demand is no longer a, a normal curve, a bell curve, but it becomes a spike in terms of distribution uh, because it's 100% uh, of the days we observe that it will be 20 because we assume every day there will be a 20 uh, tire sale. But when we do that also, we are falling back onto our our um, standard EOQ formula because now the zigzag shape has given way to a smooth triangle and because it is the gradient is fixed, all triangles also share the same shape. They have the same width, they have the, they have the same height. But we have dealt with that argument before. That was in our standard EOQ theory, right? So what we do then is to say, well, in that theory, the best order quantity was just to use the EOQ formula. And so we are going to basically copy and paste the EOQ formula uh, onto our current discussion where we let the demand, the daily demand, loose and it can have uh, high points, it can have low points, uh, but the average is 20 tires or uh, the shape of it follows normal distribution. Okay, what has changed, however, is that we can no longer call this order quantity optimal. We will say that this is the recommended best order quantity. We can say it is pretty ideal that you try to follow the EOQ formula, right? But we cannot claim that this is theoretically or provably optimal because in the EOQ case, we could use calculus to show that it is the best order quantity, but not here, it is fluctuating, okay? So half of our required policy has been solved and that is uh, use the EOQ formula as our order quantity. Yeah, okay. So to um, wrap up for the first half of our two number discussion, right? Remember the two numbers? How many to order? When to order? So the how many to order, use the EOQ formula. So we are midway into our discussion about the continuous review policy with dynamic demand of the goods that we are selling. The good that we are selling in our example is tire, right? So the car tires are sold and we have dynamic demand and we will approximate that demand with uh, some sort of probability distribution. So for example, we assume that the daily demand, little d, is normally distributed with a mean of hmm, 20 tires and a standard deviation of 8 tires. Now, uh, is that is that uh, really true? We, we are basically approximating reality, right? So to the extent that dynamic demand cannot really be predicted on a day-to-day -day basis in time, we model or we have a firm control over the statistical behavior, the aggregate uh, behavior, right? So we discussed and debated about how we can use the uh, EOQ formula by kind of uh, arguing that the mean demand is representative of the entire distribution. And so when the demand, the daily demand falls back to constancy, we can make use of the EOQ with constant demand theory that we developed in the other video to um, uh, sort of advise us on what is the best order quantity, except now when we use the EOQ formula, we do not uh, advocate that it is optimal because we are unable to prove it, it is statistical now. Um, nevertheless, 
it remains as one of the most uh, the, the the best recommendation right the recommendation we can say is best next we come to the the other number about continuous review so how many to order use eoq formula when to order and that has got to do with determining the reorder point what is the r for our continuous review policy right so that's the main uh, idea that we are going to explore a little bit now earlier on in our constant demand eoq analysis our r was kind of uh, not so interesting because we did have a formula for it and that is more about uh, saying that our r was the daily demand d example 20 because it was a constant demand times the number of days for our lead time so if the lead time was 3 d was 20 then whenever we cross the 60 right because 20 times 3 is 60 whenever we cross the 60 tire watermark that will be the event trigger for us to pick up the phone and call our supplier for more tires coming in right that will result in a spike of delivery later on after the lead time that was for <clears throat> EOQ, constant demand, constant lead time. Here, we allow the demand to uh, be relaxed. Okay, We allow the demand to be relaxed uh, into some sort of a probability distribution. Say, for example, normal distribution, which is very natural. Then what happens is that um, if we use the mean as our d all right if we use the me which is basically uh we can call it d bar right just the mean of the daily demand and the eight is our sigma d uh squared just to show that sigma d is our eight then um what we have is that in one uh I would call it example because this is not our final form yet. We might say that R1, one example or one possibility for our reorder point is to uh, borrowing the EOQ with constant demand uh, discussion is to use the D bar as representative of D because D now is a curve. It has no fixed number. But we also typically use the mean to represent the curve whenever we need a single point of representation so we use d times l 